Welcome to 3ABN Family Worship. My name is John Dinsey, and I am glad that my wife Idalia is with me today. Mm -hmm. And we're glad that you are also with us so that this family can join with your family in <laughs> family worship. That's right. We always look forward to Friday evening sundown family worship to receive the Sabbath and share experiences of the week and grow together as a family. When we sit and, and reminisce about the experiences we've had with our children, sometimes we laugh. And of course, we, <laughs> we thank the Lord for everything he has done through the ministry of a family worship at home. Amen. Amen. Well, we have some members of the family that are visiting mm -hmm. and we have uh, Tom and Elaine Waters. Mm -hmm. Welcome. That's Thank great you. to be here. <laughs> nice to be with you. We love this topic too, family worship. Nice Amen. to be able to do family worship with you. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Amen. Right. Amen. We're glad that you're here mm -hmm. and uh, we want to welcome uh, every one of you that are joining. We know some of you may not be with all the family members of your household but we hope that you will join in this family worship. Mm -hmm. Before we continue, we are going to go to the Lord in prayer and we want to invite you to join us mm -hmm. uh, so that you can be part of the blessing. So, Idalia, let's go to the Lord in prayer. How about if we uh, ask the Lord to be part of this meeting? Mm -hmm. Our loving Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you, Lord, because another week has ended. Another week of challenges yes. for some, uh, difficulties, problems they faced, we ask that you will help us to put those behind us and focus in spending time with one another and spending time with you. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, for the scriptures that are able to make us wise unto salvation. Yes. And we thank you that the scriptures tell us about this special day that you have selected mm -hmm. to be with us. We ask you, Lord, to be with every person that is joining us, wherever they may be. May your Holy Spirit also speak to them and draw them close to you. We pray that as we discuss and share, you will guide us, guide our conversations, bring to mind things that should be told so that your name is honored and glorified and your children blessed. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for being with us in this week. And we ask you that you will be with us in this Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. 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 Well, since this uh, may be new to some of you, some of you have mm -hmm. heard the word Sabbath before and think it means this or that, uh, we want to go to the scriptures and show you why we have family worship on 3ABN. So I am moving to the book of Exodus chapter 20, and I'm going to read verses 8 through 11. And the Bible says this, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger, who is within your gates. And then he tells us why. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. This is, uh, of course, one of the commandments, one of the Ten Commandments. And it's interesting that when you read in uh, Genesis chapter 1 and 2 and this is the only day that the Lord blessed mm -hmm. in, the, in the special sense. He rested and blessed this day. Mm -hmm. Sanctified it. Yes. 
And it's interesting also what is revealed in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13. I'm going to ask you, Dada, to read that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to ask Tom and Elaine, Elaine to share with us uh, about the Sabbath day. It says 58, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13. But first, you must start respecting the Sabbath as a joyful day of worship. You must stop doing and saying whatever you please on this special day. That's a very interesting rendering mm -hmm. uh, of the, what version is that one? Uh, this is the, oh, this is contemporary English version. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and read it from the New King James Version. Okay. And it says, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, and show honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Verse 14, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills on the, of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, uh, we'd like to offer you the opportunity to share from your heart uh, about these verses and how the Sabbath has been a delight for you and your family. Yeah, it's, well, it's great to be here with you, and uh, we're delighted to be here, aren't we, Jerry? That's right. <laughs> So for us, um, we both grew up Seventh-day Adventists, mm -hmm. and that has its positives and it has its negatives, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the negatives, at least uh, during the time that we grew up, was that Sabbath was sort of, you can't do anything, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll speak for myself, you had your own experience. Right, well, it says <laughs> not doing your own pleasures exactly. or speaking your own words or those kind of things, so that was, you know but it was never replaced. Mm -hmm. okay. That was the, the missing, you know, we call it the replacement principle. Mm -hmm. If God's asking us not to do something or our parents are asking us not to do something, yeah. then okay, there, there's, there's a good reason for that. Yes. Right. But then can we fill in the gap here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so unfortunately for me, again, a little differently than my wife, uh, I, I kind of went the other way sometimes and did my own thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the right thing, mm -hmm. but for our children, uh, we, we wanted to make sure that by God's grace that could be different, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they would look forward. Yes. They looked forward to family worship Right every to the empty light. Yes. <laughs> and for Sabbath, we wanted it to be a delight. So we, we worked to make it special. You know, it wasn't that way at first when our children came <clears throat> along, and that was by the time we got to Sabbath, I was so exhausted from the week because I still had my nursing profession. That's I was right. raising two little ones, mm -hmm. and I was exhausted. And then you clean the house, and you get your food ready, and all these kind of things that you feel this pressure for. Mm -hmm. Yes. And by the time this holy sacred hours entered, mm -hmm. I was exhausted. I was impatient. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, the tension in the home mm -hmm. was Boy. the worst of the week. And wow. come Sabbath mornings, hurry, scurry, get everybody ready for exactly. this. And, you know, God spoke to our hearts because mm -hmm. this was the path we were on yeah. that we had to turn that around. So one of the things we did to turn it around is that we began to start implementing family worship every day. Mm -hmm. And that was such a big help for us. Amen. It helped us also in training our children when we went to the church that they could learn to sit and listen. That's right. Because we're, we're having worship every mm -hmm. day at home. Now, mm -hmm. that's something I wanted to do. And I, I, I told my husband, you know, you need to lead out in this because mm -hmm. you're the head of the home. <laughs> And he kept saying, no, that's your job. You know, you're the mom, uh -huh. you're too little. I gotta yes. get to work. And so we kind of had this back and forth for a while. And then finally one day I, I kept, I won't say I did it the right way. I, I nagged. Mm -hmm. Wives, if you nag, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for. Really <laughs> we need to pray and not nag because God has better power than we do. Boy, I, I just heard a loud amen from all those gentlemen out there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, God gave him, the, God put the burden well, in the, your house. The, the beauty of it is, is that God began to work in my wife's heart for your approach. Yes, Amen. yes. And what didn't work by nagging, because I remember the first day that I did family worship <laughs> With my, my way, nagging. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that uh, I got halfway through it and she said, uh, you, you, no, you don't do it that way, honey. <laughs> and <it's> like, <laughs> so I took, well, it wasn't the Bible, but I took the book that I was reading out of and mm -hmm. I, she said I threw it at her, but I just threw it to her, <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so she, she started praying for me. Mm -hmm. oh. And the amazing thing is, I'm not saying this is the only approach, but for me, mm -hmm. she started praying for me and, and God started reaching into my heart and mm -hmm. he started giving me a burden. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question because I want to make sure I'm, uh, I'm understanding what you're saying. You say she started praying for you. Are you saying that you were hearing her pray for you? No, or I didn't she know. she told it. you she was praying? That's a good question because I didn't, I didn't know tell him I was praying. praying. She never <laughs> said anything. But this is looking back. Okay. Because I started to develop, literally, I never had a burden. And, and I, for you guys out there, we need this burden. Yes. Get it from God. Your wife yes. won't do a good job of giving you the burden. <laughs> but we, we, we don't often, we guys are out there. We're the right. providers. Yes. We're supposed to be the ones to take care of everything out there. Mm -hmm. She takes care of everything in here. Right. But I started developing this in my heart. Mm -hmm. And I realized this is God. Yes. And I started praying about it. Amen. And then I said to her one Friday evening, I said, are you praying for me? <laughs> oh, that God will put this in my heart? And yeah. she's, she got this big smile on her face, you know, and she said, yes, I've been praying because it's better than nagging. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, and there's a difference how we pray, too. We can tell God what he needs to do, right? Oh, definitely. God, you need to fix this. <laughs> he, he's That's me. Problem. Fix me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not us are nagging. Well, no, it's them. <laughs> but it's it's really it's a submission on my part yes. to put he, my husband in the hands of God. Yes. God can do what he needs to do in my husband's heart. Mm -hmm. And God, I need you to do something in my heart. Yeah. Help me to be thankful for where I am. I have a husband who loves me. He loves his kids. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Amen. that's something to be thankful for right there. If he doesn't have the burden, help me to do it in a sweet spirit and to represent to our children. Yes. that this is still family worship even though daddy can't be here. Yes, mm -hmm. yes I'm doing yeah. it in behalf of him. Mm -hmm. This is such a different message that our children need to get. Then when he entered in the picture, the little girls were already, oh goody, daddy can be here today. Like this yes. is all, daddy's been a part of this all the time, but now his presence is actually there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. I think that's an important piece to bring out. But anyway, so yeah, we started switching, preparing for the Sabbath. Mm -hmm started during the week and that mm -hmm. was huge yes that we we started looking forward to and planning for the sabbath yes mm -hmm. you know this is new to people uh because you're you you mentioned something a moment ago you said sacred hours of the sabbath mm -hmm. and and the bible the bible says god says that the sabbath is holy that's right mm -hmm. he sanctified it's holy it is they are mm -hmm. sacred hours mm -hmm. and so we want to uh, make sure that uh, you're understanding what we're saying uh, because we are accustomed nowadays to recognizing a, the beginning of a day at midnight. That's right. right. Midnight begins a new day. Mm -hmm. But the Bible does not make uh, or does not state that the days begin that way. The days begin at sunset. If you notice in Genesis chapter 1, it says uh, that it was the evening and the morning, one day, evening and the morning, second day, and so on. So when, when we're talking about... Uh, Sabbath, we're talking about when the sun sets on Friday, the Sabbath begins. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so the sun set Friday to sunset Saturday, that's the Sabbath. Those are the sacred hours of the day that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And you said preparing for the Sabbath because, you know, the Lord says, in it you shall not do any work. So we, we want to keep those things away from the Sabbath hours that distract us from having that communion with God in such a special way. Mm -hmm. And you've mentioned also very powerful that you had your your uh, family worship every day mm -hmm. but the sabbath became special and and that was a process for you i'm sure it was absolutely it was a process so this is marvelous uh, praise the lord and i like the fact that you said have you been praying for me because <laughs> you notice a change you notice a change yes. and god does that in such a marvelous way he helps us he leads Amen. us so Amen. that our thoughts can identify with his thoughts mm -hmm. yes. and we can come into harmony with him and with one another that's right and that's so right. this is great this is mm -hmm. great the way it happened so yeah uh, so we we also one of the things that i really appreciated was that we noticed not just with our little children but with the other children in church that the kids aren't used to sitting mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock in the morning on Sabbath morning. No, That's they're right. not. Because that hasn't been what they're trained in. So she had this idea, which I thought was great. Mm -hmm. She it said, I'm going to start, yeah, the Lord put it in her heart, but I'm going to start reading them a story and have them sit quietly. Awesome. Oh, great. At that time of the every day. 
And so the next Sabbath, just one Sabbath, we went to church and they were totally connected. Wow. Not totally Praise connected the with the preacher because they're little, you know, they're right. two, three years Age. old. Mm -hmm. But they had their little quiet, we had these little quiet books. Felt books. Felt oh, books. yes. Mm -hmm. They were totally quiet. It, it didn't have to be me or her taking them out because they're screaming. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and the people start saying, what is going on here? How did you get them to do that? Praise <laughs> the Lord. That way everyone can enjoy the, the right. Sabbath program at church or any yes. gathering. Yeah, and then if they're used to sitting for 30 minutes, just hearing a it's story, discipline. you know, I would speak softly and then I'd ask questions and involve them. When they're little, I'd point to that. Where's such and such in the picture? Did you see this? Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And it started training their ear to listen. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think this is also another important part because we need to train our ears to listen to God and He doesn't yes. always shout at us. That's a lot right. of times He speaks to us in that Quiet still voice. small voice to mm -hmm. conscience, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so training that, that ear to listen for what is being said yes. is very important. And, and that was remarkable. I mean, it's like, because actually I didn't, Sabbath was not a delight for me when yes. I had young children mm -hmm. because it was just the <laughs> getting it all ready and exhausted and then getting impatient, feeling guilty and just this will struggle between mm -hmm. child yeah. and mom. That's right. It, 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 so we, we, it, t it is a journey. It doesn't happen in a week or two weeks, but it happens quicker than we recognize yes. the transition. And mm -hmm. that's the encouraging thing because God's working alongside of us. Amen. 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 Well, when I was uh, young, um, my mom did have worship and to her husband, um, he had to leave early for work. So he would, we, she would wake us up at five in the morning and we would have our family worship. Mm. So at five in the morning, we would have that worship and in the evening, we would have another family worship. But we dreaded Sabbath to come because we couldn't do anything. It was so legalistic, you know, like you're just gonna sit there and you're just gonna read and sing and, and that's it. You know, we're going to go door to door. Well, we enjoyed going door to door because we're out and about and we're with a group of young people and we're doing something. Right. But we're doing a program that the church put out for us. But as a family, to say that we had the opportunity to sit with mom and really enjoy a Sabbath, no, you know, yeah. that, that didn't happen. You know, it's interesting because... Uh it appears that the way parents present the Sabbath to children right. is that um, maybe some parents didn't learn the, the delight that the Sabbath is mm -hmm. and they were not able to communicate that to their children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping that as we are discussing here, some parents will begin to see that the Sabbath is a delight. Mm -hmm. And how can we make it delightful for our children that they look forward to the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. So um, perhaps you can, you can share some ideas as to oh, yeah. how you... How you uh, how that process uh, developed for you and ideas that the Lord gave you mm -hmm. to, to, work, to, to work with your children for your family. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we have so many ideas, but one of the things that we wanted to, first of all, I'll just say it to, again to, to the guys out there. I worked hard all week and I would come to Friday night and I was, uh, <laughs> it, it was a Sabbath, okay? Mm -hmm. And I really, I love the Sabbath, but when I would get in my chair, and start to read the word or after church or sabbath after afternoon after lunch i had good intentions but i tell you that i was out like a light in about two minutes <laughs> well his chair was a lazy boy chair and it's named that way for a reason wrong chair to sit up because <laughs> when he put that the, the feet up and the head tilted back I realized that the 30 to 45 seconds of Bible reading soon faded into uh, oblivion. That so. communicates to the body, hey, this is the position I normally get in. Talked just... about Sabbath rest, right? <laughs> exactly. So it, it was, I'm, I'm speaking to guys mm -hmm. because yeah. one of the things that God put in my heart again mm -hmm. was that I needed to be a part of my family on the Sabbath and mm -hmm. make it a really delightful mm -hmm. day that was mm -hmm. directed. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of my issues when I was younger was there, was, there wasn't the, necessarily the proper direction. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, my family, we went to the nursing home, the old people's home oh, on yes. Sabbath and yes. sang. Mm -hmm. And that was good. Mm -hmm. I didn't always like it, but it was good. It was yes. a good direction. Mm -hmm. And so I got up out of my <laughs> lazy boy chair, <laughs> which made me very lazy. <laughs> I got up out of my chair, and I was determined we're going to do some things that are really enjoyable on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. 
And so one of the things that we did, uh, just, you know, you can take a Walmart bag or, you know, any little shopping bag, and we would go out as a family. If we had someone for dinner, we would take them out, their family. Mm -hmm. We would have direction, and that is we're going to go out and we're going to do it treasure hunt. Mm -hmm. We've done this in Los Angeles, so you can do it anywhere. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're going to do it. We did a backyard treasure hunt in Los Angeles, but Interesting. you know, fortunately, You're talking we, about the walk with the bag. Yeah. So we take we take these bags and we go on a little uh, little walk in nature and we pick up little things and put it into the bag. Mm -hmm. Nobody sees it. Right. And we come back and mm -hmm. we do a little activity where we are going to you know, somebody's going to volunteer to take something out of the bag. Somebody's mm -hmm. going to volunteer to sit and have, you know, in a chair. And then be blindfolded. I'm going to be blindfolded. Oh. The person who volunteers to sit in the chair is blindfolded. And then the other person takes something out of the bag and puts it into their hand. Oh. And then you have to use your senses. We don't recommend taste. Because <laughs> you can't have sight. <laughs> you can't see it. But you can smell it, feel it. And then they guess what's in their hand. Mm -hmm. Once they guess that, mm -hmm. the next thing is, because it's all nature, okay? It's... And my wife, God and Bible. my wife made the rule that you can't have anything that creeps or crawls. <laughs> and, That's a good rule, Mom. That's a good rule. Right? Mom rule. So our son, you know, he tried to figure out a way so he would get something that was dead that had creeped or crawled and put it in there. Only in Mom's <laughs> hand. <Yeah. laughs> so she had to revise the rules that doesn't, it's never creeped or crawled. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> then once they guess what it is, okay, so we'll just use a simple example for the little yeah. children. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have a rock in their hand. Right. Okay, so can you think of any story in the Bible that yes. had a stone or a rock? And, of course, children think of David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. So then we would take that Bible story, yes. let them share what they know about the story, mm -hmm. and then how can we apply it to them? Mm -hmm. Do you ever Good. face any giants? Mm -hmm. And, of course, they're thinking... No, I don't. Well, what about the giants of when mommy asks you to come in and help fold the clothes <laughs> and you want to ride your bike? Is exactly. that a giant? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, I it never is. thought of that before. <laughs> and so I'll make it very practical. Right. Everybody in the family, or, or if you've got a family there for lunch, everybody participates. Everybody gets to sit in a chair right. and have something put into their hand. Mm -hmm. And it turns into an hour, hour and a half, yes. Yes. and no problem. You don't feel the time mm -hmm. glance? No boredom. Mm -hmm. And even three and four year olds can participate yes. in that. That's it's right. It's amazing. We've done this with our grandchildren, and they said it's the happiest Sabbath we've ever had. Oh. I love it. Oh. Yeah. Just because it's something Marvelous. different, right? Something different. Yes, something yeah. different. Mm -hmm. yes. So the, the key is look for things that we can do that, that will spark the interest. So we always try to use nature. Mm -hmm. Children are curious. We learn yes. a lot about God through nature. Mm -hmm. So we try in nature to the Word of God a story or a principle from the Word of God and then take it to application. Yes. How does that affect them? As he yeah. illustrated mm -hmm. with the, you know, the giants in the life. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So wonderful. That's wonderful. We, uh, you know, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm thinking about this. It's very interesting that uh, God has a way of speaking to us. That's right. I remember we were doing a youth program on, it was Sabbath afternoon. We have these, in the Spanish culture, the Spanish churches, we have, uh, it's, it's very, very um, looked for a, a thing of the Sabbath that you, it's like you're closing the Sabbath together and the youth have the opportunity to present. AY. Mm -hmm. They call it AY mm -hmm. also. Yeah. Um, but one, uh, I said, well, why don't, we, why don't we look at the elephant and see all the different things the elephants do and how they do. So I gave out little portions to kids to participate in. And so uh, we presented this in the church, and it was very interesting uh, about the elephants. You know, like for example, some people think that when when there's a, an elephant and a mouse comes in, that the elephant gets afraid and all this, and and it's not true. The elephants don't care whether or not there's a mouse there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not true. But anyway, after it was all over, you know, this is one of those times that I know the Lord said something to me. Mm -hmm. It was all over, and I'm, I'm thinking, wow, that was really interesting. And the Lord said in my mind, where was I in all of that explanation that you did about the elephants? Mm -hmm. And I was, wow. I was, I was shocked. And I said, I'm sorry, Lord. You created the elephants. You made the elephants the wonderful creatures they are. So 
to bring out that God is our creator on the Sabbath. I think it, it, uh, it's especially important mm -hmm. because remember the Sabbath day to keep it whole. Sick. Why? For in six days, God created the heavens and the earth. And so I learned a valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. I learned a valuable lesson. So, Amen. Yes. So uh, how about some other things you have done to make uh, family worship a delight? Well, the Sabbath of the I think that what, what was very helpful for us is because we, we actually created a Sabbath planner. And so Sunday morning we started planning for the following week. And that planner is available on our website, rionline.org. Okay. It's under the resources and it's you have to scroll down a little ways to find out um, the printed things because they oh, can print it out. Can you mention that again just in case somebody said I wasn't ready, I wasn't ready. Yes. <laughs> rionline.org. Mm -hmm dot org o r g and mm -hmm. that stands for Restoration International, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was so helpful to us because we created then a, a theme for the week in mm -hmm. preparation. A lot of times it went along with the lesson plan for the children, right? But we wanted to try to capture all of the depth that we could from these stories in the Bible, and how it would be applied to our children, mm -hmm. to their ability to understand. And what we discovered is, is our children could understand much more when we kept trying to dig deeper yes. and explain things in a simple way, but going deep in it. Mm -hmm. And so one, one of the things that, that was very uh, remarkable for me was the story of Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated with that story, mm -hmm. but reading it and rereading it and then having a, a week on the life of Nehemiah, because that's what the lesson was about for the children, mm -hmm. to see how focused he was that in spite of all the distractions that came in, that he would not get off that wall. He just kept mm -hmm. moving forward with the purpose God had given him. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting to me because I homeschooled our children and their desks just happened to each of their desks, they could look out a window. Well, that's not necessarily the best <laughs> classroom. You know, notice in, in, in public schools or wherever, the, the teacher's in the front, right? right. And the windows are Basically. on the side on or the on side. the back. Mm -hmm. But we, we're doing it at home, right? We had right. lots of windows in the house, and so we had some of the desks in the kitchen and a desk in the office, and they all had windows to look out. And sometimes it was uh, challenging to keep my kids the children's focus, right, yes. on the schoolwork instead of the squirrels and the birds and That's other right. things. Mm. And so that lesson, I remember the day I said to our son, Josiah, remember Nehemiah. Mm. He didn't come off the wall. Mm. So what, and, and we would bring this, so what is your wall that you're building? Mm. It's your math lesson right now. Yes. Mm. And so when the job is complete, you can step off the wall. Yes. And it was like, just remember Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, and just I, instead of, don't keep looking out the window, you know? <laughs> but right. we, we use the Bible as, as, as a teacher and as authority mm -hmm. so that it brings those lessons. And it, it's, it's there's so many beautiful things we've learned from the Bible that mm -hmm. we need and can use practically every day in life. Mm -hmm. And we see so many samples in the Bible of, of uh, just families that didn't have it all together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and praise the Lord that these encounters with our children or, or gatherings with the family worship, we talk about our week, how was your week, even though we, we talk about it every day, really. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's good to use these samples in the Bible so that we can grow from that. That's right. What is the lesson in there? Uh, sometimes we hear a sermon, but we don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. We don't make it mm -hmm. a reality in our life. Mm -hmm. There's a lesson there for me. So as we contemplate different personalities in the Bible, different stories, um, we identify, we can identify, and the Bible becomes real to That's us. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. You look at the different families of the Bible and you do see that, you say, wow, that was a, 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 not a good idea for, <laughs> for uh, Joseph to get that coat of many colors. That's right. <laughs> it well, didn't work out favoritism, well. Favoritism, right? There, yes. yes, yes, and I mean, the father was happy, proud of his <laughs> son, and he wanted to give him a special gift, but he had not given that gift to the others, and it's like, Hey, why did, why, why did he get that, you know? So it creates a problem. Yeah. So, yes, yes. I, <laughs> well, what I wanted to say is, you're, okay, what about Adam and Eve? Because we're talking about, okay, Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. We're talking about um, the people you just mentioned right now. Jacob. Joseph. Joseph, uh, Jacob, the, Joseph yes. the, the coat of many colors. Many colors. But we're longing to have this perfect home 
this perfect family. I want my family to be happy. But, you know, it's just as we sacrifice to do a good job at work, men, they do a good job in providing. Uh, we want to do a good job in uniting the family. Mm -hmm. And what we can give our children is the love mm -hmm. of Jesus. Amen. So that their salvation, that they will embrace that and they will not want to lose it. So we look at Adam and Eve, they have the perfect home. They have the perfect home, but something happened there, you know, and so sin entered and now families struggle every day. There's a single parent, uh, I'm not gonna say just single moms because there are single fathers That's out right. there. Right. And we are praying for your home. And as a single parent, you have all the responsibilities of working and providing not only material, physical things to your family, but also the spiritual needs. Mm -hmm. So how can we um, connect Adam and Eve and Abraham and Isaac uh, and, and Sarah and all these stories so that our viewers at home can say, you know what, which family do I identify with? Yeah. Which one do I identify well, with? Well, it's interesting, you know, uh, our water bottles here. <laughs> yes. Live restored. Live restored. And, and this, this is something that's been a growing uh, desire in our hearts uh, in, in the ministry of Restoration International, which grew out of the ministry in our own home. Mm -hmm. And this idea of living restored is God's ideal for us. Amen. Yes. Seeing the family restored back to the relationship mm -hmm. with God. And so being honest, okay, is very important in our families. Mm -hmm. Being honest. One of the things we did to, to come back to your question, in the evenings, every day, we had family talk time. Mm. And it was really family transparency time. It was Amen. family time together to talk about anything. And we started it when our children were fairly young. Yeah, early school age. Yeah, early school age. And that proved to be such a blessing. We did that a half an hour before the evening worship. And it was a time to open up their hearts and really talk, uh, you know, our son, uh, some of our some of the viewers know our story from um, being on here before, but uh, our son took some detours, uh, some sad detours. Okay, which um, you know he's back with the Lord. We're very thankful. Amen. We never doubted that he would come back to the Lord. And I think one of the things that we need is to be as parents is anchors for our children. Yes, that starts the younger the better. That. Amen. In those family talk times that we had together, we told our children, you can tell us anything. You can tell us whatever you're going through, whatever is bad, mm -hmm. and w it's not gonna change our love for you. That's mm -hmm. right. It's not gonna change the way we relate to you. And we're thankful for that because when he went through this, you know, I'm gonna say tragic, tragic detour, okay? Mm -hmm. When he went through that, he never, lost the hope in Wait. us as his parents. Amen. Good, good. Praise the Lord. He said, I knew, of course, now we've had so many conversations, uh, but he said, I knew that you would never give up on me. Praise Amen. the Lord. So never give up. If mm -hmm. some of you, I know that there are, there are people out there that are going through these things. Never give up. Jesus says, I will never leave you never or forsake, forsake you. you. Okay. You. Josiah said, I knew you would never stop believing in me. Mm -hmm. I knew you would never stop loving me. Mm -hmm. And and so we need to develop the communication. And this is one of our, our again, passions. passions, is that parents develop young the connection. We call it winning the heart. Mm -hmm. So if you know out there as viewers, if you know right now, because it'll be a spontaneous thought, if you don't have the heart of your child, don't beat yourself up but don't give up. Mm -hmm. Look for ways to reach each of our children or individuals that are very, yes. di very different. And we, want to, we wanted to win the hearts of our children. Mm -hmm. And even through the hardest times that he went through, he still had a heart connection with us. That's Amen. praise. He wouldn't talk to his mother mm -hmm. because he said, I break her heart. He would, he would say, Father, I don't talk to mother because I'm breaking her heart. Mm -hmm. But he said, I know you, you can you can hear me and I know it's, it's hurting you too. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we, when we actually gave him to the Lord in a, in a way we'd never had, yes. I did a little bit earlier than she did. Mm -hmm. 
he called and he said, I can talk to, to mother now because he says, I know she's given me to the Lord. Wow. wow. I said, how did you know that? And he said, well, I think God just put that in my heart even though I'm doing these things I'm doing mm -hmm. because it was the day after she made that decision. Mm. He called and he said, I can talk to, mo I can talk to mother now. Amen. Wow. We are not our children's saviors. That's right. We can be examples, encourager, mm -hmm. instruction, give instructions, but we cannot save them. Mm -hmm. Only God can save. That's right. And so, you know, for a parent, it's challenging when we see a child making or a young adult making choices that we know are going to cause them pain and agony, you know, in their life and obviously to the Lord as well. Um, we have to let the Lord, we have to trust the Lord, the life of that child to the Lord. Yes. Yes and trust the Lord with that. And I mm -hmm. think that's, that's really been powerful, but it's so important to develop this foundation. And I appreciate what you were saying because um, it doesn't matter what our family structure is. Mm -hmm. If it's a two parent, if it's a blended family, if it's a single parent, we all have the opportunity to develop family worship in our homes. That's right. Especially to bring in the Sabbath hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's so important because God says it's, it's a delight. Mm -hmm. And that when we delight in that, then we will ride on the high places of the earth. In other words, we're gonna have an experience. Mm -hmm. And really it's talking about the rewards of eternity as well in this, in this scripture. And so having, uh, making Sabbath and family worship a high priority. Yes is so important and if it's a joy for us it'll be a joy for them yes That's right. you know i've often said to our children early on now this is going to be really hard and i know you're not going to like it i've already prepared their mind to reject <laughs> what i'm going to say next That's right. right but if i say this is going to be fun and you're going to learn something new today in school or we're going to learn a new task today and we're going to have fun doing it together i already i have already enlisted their will that's mm. right. to engage yes. and this is why it's so important when we talk about spiritual principles in the mm -hmm. Bible is that this is going to be, bring us our greatest joy because yes. right. God has promised it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this is going to be something fun we do and so on our website not only do we have that Sabbath planner but we also have and it's free, it's under the resources in the audio section a whole series called Remember the Sabbath Day. Mm -hmm. It has four one hour presentations mm -hmm. of things we can do in our homes as families, whether they're little bitties, you know, toddlers to grade schoolers, mm -hmm. or whether they're young adults in the home. Mm -hmm. Things we can do to bring uh, a special feature into our Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, they has been some of the highlights for yes. our family and other families as well. It's like breaking the monotony. Right, yes. because we become a, a routine, traditional followers of this is how we do it every Sabbath in, Sabbath out. This is always what we do. But throwing in those different uh, surprises, uh, the kids start looking forward to it. Even uh, as adults, I mean, right. when you have a special activity at the church, that also um, they are excited like what are we doing something different looking forward to it i look forward to um sabbaths sabbath is a delayed sabbath is a time that we don't have to think about what the cares of this world is we just focus into you know lord i cast all my cares on you mm. you know i lay all of my burden just like the Bible says, um, we want to just lay everything aside and connect with heaven. We need to learn to put, separate our mind or turn off our minds. So how do you say it? <laughs> you know, is, is that what we have to do? Because sometimes we're trying to worship or pray and your mind is like, oh, I need to do this and then I need to do that. You know, that is true. When you look at the Sabbath, the way God, uh, and I'm glad the way it's worded the way it is. Mm -hmm. The way is, we read Exodus chapter 20, verses mm -hmm. 8 through 11. Thank you, Lord, for the details. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because it, it talks about to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. You shall not do any work. And then you can say, well, I don't have to do any work. My, my son and my daughter will do all the work. But no, but it says there, neither know your son or your daughter. That's right. And, and even, even goes down to the animals. They also need rest, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it's, it's marvelous. It's marvelous to, to read God's Word. And, and God tells us, what? You mean the Sabbath is supposed to be a delight? And people look at the commandments and say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. But they are, they are uh, expressions of God's desire for us to be happy. You want, I want you to be happy. I love you. So 
do not steal, <laughs> do not, these right. things are going to hurt you. Yeah. And so the Sabbath is like, it's different, it's worded different. It doesn't say, it doesn't say uh, do not forget, but it says, remember the Sabbath day mm -hmm. yes. to keep it holy. It, it, it has a, uh, like a, a, a more delightful expression, if I could say, because people nowadays oh. take the commandments, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Mm -hmm. And the Sabbath commandment begins different. Uh, so the Sabbath becoming a delight, I like the way uh, you're, you're making expressions that prepares the mind. The Lord does that with us as well. Mm -hmm. Prepares the mind for what you're about to say. And too often uh, as parents, you know, uh, what the 90 something percent that comes out of our mouth to the children, perhaps it's don't do this, why did you do that? And, and if it's negative, 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 they need to hear some positive things as well right. and some words that encourage their, their cooperation, yes. encourage them to feel, they, my, my dad really cares about me, my mom really cares about me. Mm -hmm. That is so important because uh, we do naturally default in real life, especially in our homes. We, we see the things that need to be done, the things that aren't getting done right. And we had a, a kind of a uh, thing between us kind of quietly that if we started noticing that we're having to do more correcting mm -hmm. and, and maybe this will you know, be, be for, for you as our viewers, if you find yourself, you're correcting more, mm -hmm. one of us would say to the other, uh, we're getting back to the, to the correcting. Let's get back to the positive encouragement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's encourage every good choice our children make. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, okay, mm -hmm. within a day, the energy of doing what was right overcame the energy of doing what's pushing back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we were encouraging it, and so we began to encourage more and more of what you're doing right, right. and had less and less of what you're doing wrong. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And it's, it's, it's positive. It's very, very um, um, common that we forget to, to praise you yeah. know, the good. We always point out the bad. It's, uh, you messed up again, fix that up or get this done or yeah. that done. But when it's done, of course, we need to recognize that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that's what God does when he, in His Word. Yeah. He continually brings us, do this and thou shalt live, right? He gives us all the positive, but He knows our weakness. And He also has to show us that the way of the transgressor is a hard way. So that's if right. you choose not, then there are things that are going to bring you sadness mm -hmm. and yes. unhappiness. Yes. I wanted to bring out this example from Genesis chapter 4 because I find it interesting. Uh, in Genesis chapter 4, we have the story of Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, what I'm talking about now is after Cain offered what he was not supposed to offer and God approaches him. And in verse 6, the Lord approaches Cain. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? You know, it wasn't like, what's wrong with you? Why, 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 <laughs> why are you that way? What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. No, he approached him in a fatherly way. Mm -hmm. Why are you angry? <laughs> and why has your countenance fallen? God notices these things. Yes, he does. And yeah. so as parents also, we should notice the demeanor of our children so that, boy, he, he or she doesn't seem to be happy right now. I wonder what's going on and approach them instead of just, you know, you know, put a smile on your face. <laughs> yeah. I really like that because um, God's approach to the very first sin was asking questions. Yes. yes. And we tend to jump in and say, I know what you did. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Why did, instead, God, the all-knowing, all-loving, mm -hmm. comes right. in and says, right. where are you? Mm -hmm. Did he know where they were hiding? Absolutely. Of course he did. We often jump in mm -hmm. and we need to ask more questions. Mm -hmm. When we started taking that approach, because mm -hmm. he asked a lot of questions in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's yes. Right. yes. When, when we ask questions, we give our young people the opportunity to open their heart. Because mm -hmm. when we ask, the spirit brings conviction. Yes. That's right. And when we jump in with our mouth wide open or... <laughs> with our wrong spirit. That's right. We shut them down. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I really appreciate you bringing that up. Mm -hmm. You know, you said, you said something earlier that is, is marvelous. You were talking about your son and that he felt comfortable. And he said, I knew 
that, uh, I, I, how did you express it? I knew. I knew you'd never give up you'd on me. You'd never give up on and me. And you'd never stop loving me. So that was a, that, that took, that took, uh, it was a process. Yes. And so as parents, you know, what you're saying is, what I understand you're saying is that we should be communicating with our children so that they will feel comfortable to express to us whatever's in their heart, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I I even if you have to, you know, say, I, 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 you do this, you say, let's go, son, I want to take a walk with you. Mm -hmm. And just go on a walk with your son, your daughter, and, and, and start talking to them. Tell me, how's it going, you know? And if they share something that you find something, I need to correct them on, on this one. Ask the Lord for guidance, mm -hmm. you know, because the, the Bible right. says, let your words be seasoned with mm -hmm. grace. Yeah. grace. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so if we ask the Lord for wisdom, because, you know, we can speak a lot of poison. We can speak a lot of poison. There was a... a we call them PSA, which is a public service announcement. Huh. I used to have this many years ago on 3ABN where um, it shows a child that is face down and in the background you hear, you'll never amount to anything. Uh, you're not like your father. You're not like me at all, you know, and different things that parents say that are negative. And then the announcer says, words are like a fist. Hmm. And it's true. The things that we say has an effect on people mm -hmm. and uh, on our children as well. And so right. it, it, it's, it's a challenge sometimes, but we, we, we should make that a matter of prayer to be able to, to speak to our children in such a way that it has the right effect upon them. Yes. And you were mentioning that God asks questions mm -hmm. yes. instead of saying accusations, accusations <laughs> right away. And I, I, have, I am guilty of uh, you know, like something is missing or, or say, honey, why did you, why did you move? Right. And it yeah. wasn't her. You know? yeah. <laughs> maybe I forgot I did, or maybe one of the children did it. And, and we have to stop and ask ourselves, wait a minute. Maybe, or maybe you did it and maybe you forgot. I did it. You did. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> you know, the, the, the beauty of this is, and if we will take advantage, all of us will take advantage of this. It's not even just the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a special and beautiful yes. holy day. But it's the interactions that we have all through the week that also can make the Sabbath a delight. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. And that it isn't just on Sabbath that we all of a sudden switch on Become and now we're nice super, <laughs> super dads yeah. or super moms, okay? That's right. But super Christian. It, exactly. It, that, that we gain the connection so that on the Sabbath. Yes. Mm -hmm. That, and, and this is one of the tragedies we've seen in, in, in our own family, but, but in ministry, is we often are so busy on the Sabbath mm. that our family is going different directions, mm -hmm. worse than any other day. This is mm -hmm. true. And we made it a focus and, and a commitment, and God has blessed this. Mm -hmm. We made it a commitment that, that our home truly is our first mission field. Yes. Now, we, know, we might know that as Christians, okay? Mm -hmm. But to live it... Yeah. That's takes right. a higher level of commitment. That's true. And I said to my wife, after praying about this, you know, we're the people in the church that are taking, you know, we were in a 1,300 member church, you know, working at Hinsdale Hospital back in our medical careers. And it's, it's, it's this way everywhere. 20% or less are doing 80% of the work in the church. That's right, the same. And the other 80% are saying, happy for you to do it. That's Thank right. you. <laughs> I said, I've got to learn to say no mm -hmm. more to what everybody, and I can remember making this commitment to my wife and to the Lord, that the next time the nominating committee asked me to do something, I'm going to tell them I need to check with the Lord and with my wife. And the first time that happened, it had a predictable response. <laughs> it was shock. Because mm. I always said yes. Mm -hmm. She always said yes. Mm -hmm. And we said it's time that we start saying selectively no. Yes. It, when it means that we're adding more on, because mm -hmm. we don't get any more hours in the day. Mm -hmm. When you add more on, it subtracts somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And it usually subtracts from our marriage, mm 
yes. in our family. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good subtraction. Right. We don't, we don't wanna want our children to see a to totally different person Sabbath hours. <laughs> right. Like, are you still my mother? <laughs> what happened to my mother, you know? I, Super I, dad. And so <laughs> I don't know if I've shared the story on 3ABN and family worships before, or it's just the Latino network, but when our children were small, um, they were supposed to shine their shoes by Thursday. Everything has to be, you know, in order. So one Sabbath morning, one of my sons, our sons, <laughs> did not find their shoes. It's like, what on earth is wrong with you, kid? Find the shoes. We got to go to church. <laughs> They're your Sabbath shoes, you know? So anyway, I, I told him, just go ahead, and I'm dealing with this child at home, and I am so mad at this kid. It's like, you're going to make us late, and, you know, you should have had that. I told you, blank, naggy, 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 naggy. Right. And, um, and the kid finally found his shoes. I was not about to go find them. I'm like, you are responsible for that. You deal with it. So anyway, I yelled at the skid, my son. And um, by the time I, when we walked into church, there were some people in the foyer. And, and they were like, oh, hi, Davia, happy Sabbath. I'm like, oh, how are you? <laughs> and all loving and hugging and all this stuff. Happy. <laughs> and happy. And it's like the Lord gave me a, a good sl holy slap, you know, the, the <laughs> sling slaps, yeah. you know. I'm like, what did I just do to my son? I put him through, you yeah. know, bad uh, steaming Not moments. Not heaven, you put him on the other. <laughs> <laughs> so, and here I am sitting or, or walking in and being so nice and friendly to people that don't live with me, but my child, his spirit is, you know. Broken. Uh, broken. So I then, uh, you know, the Lord convicted my heart and I was broken and I apologized to my son. Amen. But I will never do, I said, I am not going to, be fighting over any shoes. Go with your gym shoes or go barefoot. I don't care. We're going to make it. You know, we're going to go to the church. So, or maybe some folks at home are saying, oh, yeah, that was me. Go help him find the shoes. But I would be like, you know what? Uh, whatever you need, let me know when you're ready so we can go. So, but I don't want to put my kids or my family through all this stress before going to church and then sit like a saint and say, Amen, sister, or <laughs> preach it, pastor, you know? <laughs> well, that's very real. Thank you. Thank you for, because we've, we've all experienced it if we're honest and we just, we want to make sure we we've look good. We've all been good. social Christians, right? Yeah. Make yeah. Sure we're, we're out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But our children need to, to, to enjoy the peace that is within the Sabbath hours, Friday yeah. sundown to Sabbath sundown, and the activities and the go coming and the going at the church or activities, um, going to the park, going into nature. You know, that is these the are, chances that we have. These are ideas that are great for the Sabbath, you know, uh, and you, the, Lord, the Lord has infinite wisdom. Mm -hmm. He can give us ideas how to make the Sabbath a delight for the family, for the children, yeah. that uh, the whole family will look forward to the Sabbath instead of, oh no, here's the Sabbath again and we can't do this and we can't do that because uh, how, many, how many kinds of fruits did the Lord make? Mm -hmm. There are many kinds of fruits out there. Mm -hmm. So just like that, we can find there are many things that we can do on the Sabbath that is a delight. Mm -hmm. And really the Lord is keeping us away from things that interrupt our communion with Him and are not are beneficial to us in mm. some way. Uh, because the Sabbath is supposed to be a, t a special time for families and for us to spend with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'd like to expand that just a little bit too because I don't want any of our viewers to think that we're only talking about if you have children at home, mm -hmm. that you need to be having these family worships or you right. need to be making spe Sabbath a That's delight. Good. That's good. Because all of us are God's children. That's and. Right. It, heaven in eternity is going to be full of delight, right? And yes. every Sabbath will be a high day. Mm -hmm. And so for us as adults and, and maybe, you know, our children are grown and gone. That's our situation. Mm -hmm. We're kind of empty nesters now. Mm -hmm. And we still look for ways to make Sabbath extremely special in our relationship. And some of our greatest, uh, you know, Sabbath experiences has been with adults, mm -hmm. our young adults, right? Mm -hmm. And us and then even a grandfather, mm -hmm. you know, who was present. 
And he said to us, this is the best Sabbath I've ever had. He wasn't our grandfather, but he was grandfatherly age. Mm -hmm. And he said, I never knew that all these blessings we could have on the Sabbath. So it's not just for children, it's for all of us yes. to right. have all of us are given this opportunity to call the day a delight mm -hmm. and to ride on the high places that God That's has right. for us. Mm -hmm. That's what whets our appetite to continue that relationship through the next week. Mm -hmm. If Sabbath is a drudgery, then we're not motivated to commune with God during the week. And, and the Christian experience is just continually Decline. going downhill mm -hmm. and declining. So by having worship daily, and in our home we went from daily worship to morning and evening worship. Mm -hmm begin the day and end the day with God. And then Friday evening worship was always the climax of the week. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, our time is gone this wow. day. <laughs> I would like to uh, ask uh, Tom if you could say a few words to the fathers uh, that are with us, um, you know, 45 seconds, and then we'll give uh, Elaine 45 seconds. Yeah, so, so men, fathers, husbands, uh, it's, it's a privilege to be the house band. Okay, mm -hmm. the husband is the house band that holds the family together under God. And he's calling to each of our hearts. I know as we've shared together that he wants you to be all that you can be through him. He wants us as men to recognize that, that our homes is where our hearts need to be first. It's with our, it's our marriage. It's, it's our, if, if we're having, if we have children in our home, that we are with them, that we are leading the way by example. That when we make a mistake, we confess, we make no excuses, mm -hmm. that we, we tell them we're sorry and that they can respect us. Thank you so much. And for all the ladies, and um, this is really for everyone, mm -hmm. we just wanna have that right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so taking time every day in His Word, spending time in prayer with Him, looking for the things that He has for us to experience, in life and when those trials come, don't think that God has abandoned us, but those are mm -hmm. opportunities He's giving us mm -hmm. right at that moment mm -hmm. to grow our relationship with Him, to trust Him more, and then to learn to be the Proverbs 31 woman that has the, the, mm -hmm. the grace of God on her tongue. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, Idalia, time is over. Mm -hmm. uh, so we hope that you have been blessed by this family worship. We encourage you to Talk to the Lord about how you can make the Sabbath a delight for yourself and your family. Thank you for being with us. God bless you till next time. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. <laughs>